This is Stella Luna. This is the cover. The artwork is great, so I will do my best to make sure you get to see all the artwork inside. And we'll read the story and then maybe get to a bat craft afterward. First time here. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. All right. Stella Luna. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful birds swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Ugh. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the tiny bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Plump. Stella Luna landed head first in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Ugh. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Picture. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest 
unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told him it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flutter, Flat, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. I don't think it worked. How embarrassing. Yikes. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. Look, she did it. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed, so she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you are a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumbs. So that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b bugs stuttered one. You slept at night? gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you? she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. If 
Founder. You escaped the owl? Cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark. We will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as the rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon, the bats found a mango tree. Mm. And Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me, meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. Hmm. Wonder how that's gonna work out for the birds. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, flutter, and flap leapt from the tree to follow her. Ah! I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Aye! shrieked Flat. They're gonna crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted, the, lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flat nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike? wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. Wise words, Stella Luna. And that, my friends, is the end of Stella Luna. I love that book. Thank you guys for listening to me read it. It teaches us a lot about bats and friendship, I think. Bats are nocturnal creatures. They prefer to fly at night and sleep during the day. There are fruit bats that eat only fruit. There are bats that drink nectar from flowers. There are bats that do eat insects. So some bats would have maybe liked that grasshopper. But Stella Luna was a fruit bat or is a fruit bat. So she prefers the delicious mango. And they can see at night, which is really, really cool. And they're the only flying mammal 
Very, very, very cool animals in my opinion. Now, to celebrate bats, we are going to make a little bat ourselves. And so if you have the time, you can stick around and I will show you how to make one of these toilet paper roll bats. So I'm sorry that we didn't give you guys a materials list ahead of time, but I can go over this with you. And if you would like a materials list after this class, you can email me. I'll write my email up here and I'll simply respond with a list of all the materials that I'm about to go over. I'm gonna show you how to make it with all these things right here. But you need, well, here's my email. It's a Nelson at trees. Atlanta.org. That up here for you. But if you want to run and get some of this stuff or just watch me make it and then make it on your own later, you will need, first and foremost, a toilet paper roll. That's going to be our bat's body. Our wings are going to be made out of black construction paper. If you don't have black construction paper, you can always color with marker or colored pencil or paint a white sheet of paper, scrap white sheet of paper that you have. Those are going to, excuse me, those are going to be our wings. You of course need like scissors, black markers to cut, um, some glue because we are going to I have a lot of googly eyes, so I made I used googly eyes for my bat, like so. But if you don't have these, you can also make your own eyes out of paper using just a white sheet of paper, one circle with a dark circle colored in in the middle. You can cut those out, glue those on. And then if you want to give your bat teeth, what I did, this is a little hole punch, scrap sheet of paper. You know when you make a hole punch, like so, a little white circle comes out, right? I used one of those. So what you remove from the paper to make my teeth. So if you have one of those, you can use that just like so. Or you can just cut teeth out of white paper if you'd like to do that. So. First and foremost, we're going to get started real quick. I'm going to show you pretty briefly how to do it. You can always come back to this recording to watch again. You can look it up how to do it on the internet, or you can email me and I'll give you some materials and directions. But step one, you got to color your bat's body. Whatever color you want. Some bats, oops, almost got it. Some bats are brown, some are black. Sometimes bats show up as purple. I don't think there's actually a purple bat, but like in cartoons and movies, sometimes their wings are purple or their bodies will be a dark purple. But I'm just gonna go with black. And now you can color it with a marker. It shows up pretty well on the cardboard, but not super well. Even like on the one that I did, you know, it's clearly got some cardboard showing. You could, you know, if you have some black paint or brown paint, you could roll it in the paint. That would probably be the best way to get the whole thing, you know, totally solidly black or brown or purple, whatever color you're going for. But for the sake of just showing you, I'm just gonna color it a little bit. Then to create the ears, like so, you basically just have to fold the top of the toilet paper roll down. Now the easiest way I found to do that, if you're following along, is to first fold it down and make a little crease at the top. So now you have your points. So basically close the roll, you have a couple of points, and then from the points, just kind of push roll down on either side. Because you have these folded points, it'll kind of go pretty easily. You won't have to mess with it too much. Now 
And as you do that, kind of press it firmly. Voila. So if you're following along, I'll give you a second to, to catch up. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get my googly eyes ready. Again, you can make eyes out of paper if you'd like. Googly eyes are just a fun way to add some life to your bat though, or whatever you're making. Now bat, some bats have their eyes really far apart. They have big flat heads. Some eyes on bats are really close together. It depends on what kind of bat you're talking about or where in the world it lives. So there's no one way to make a bat. So I'm just gonna kinda get my dry glue out of that tip there. I'm just gonna kinda place two small dots. Make sure they're small. You don't wanna drench your toilet paper roll in glue. Boop, boop. Okay. I've got two little creepy looking glue eyes there. I'm just gonna put my googly eyes on the top. Voila. And then I recommend, in the meantime, while that's drying, going ahead and making your um, wings. Sorry, the word, the word escaped me. Okay, so I'm going to draw what the wings will look like on my black paper, okay? So first of all, if you have a black piece of paper, great. Fold it in half. If you're gonna color a white piece of paper or use a purple piece of paper, grab that and then also fold it in half. We do this so that our wings will be perfectly symmetrical. If you're not into symmetrical wings, then you can just leave it unfolded and draw both wings and then cut those out. But I'm gonna cut mine out and then we're gonna, on the folded side, the crease, that's where our the inside of our wing, the beginning of the wing, where it connects to the body, is gonna start. So from this point, what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna learn a little bat anatomy now, or about the bat's body. So here is the folded part of the paper. And here's the edge of the paper, so actually. Where the dotted line is, that's gonna be the fold, and this is the edge. So from here, we are going to start drawing our wing. And I'm gonna go up and start with the top. And then if you remember from in Stella Luna, it said that Stella Luna hung by her thumbs. Now, fun fact about bats is that they are mammals, meaning they have fur, and they their arms, Funnily enough, you wouldn't think so. They have wings, but their wings actually have the same bones that we have as people. They have two, one bone here, two bones here, and then if you look at bat bones, they actually have a thumb and then four little fingers, but they're not little, they're really long. And that's, what's, that's what allows them to have wings, is those long fingers allow them to spread the skin that is underneath the bones that allows them to fly. So here they have their short little bone and here at the top they have their thumb. And then it comes down. And this part is our forearm, is like our forearm. And then come the fingers. So you have one finger down here. So remember, we're drawing this on our paper if you're following along. So this is the end of one finger. And down here, that's the end of the second finger. Here is the end of the fourth finger. Or third, I'm sorry. <laughs> and here's the end of the fourth finger. And so it's kind of like, if I were drawing the bones, one finger, two finger, three finger, four fingers, and a thumb, just like us. 
And then from here, it just connects back to the body. So I would draw that on my paper. I'm gonna do that really quickly. I will actually put that up there too. So you can look at it. Make some space. And I'm using black paper, so you can just, you know, use a pencil or something, or maybe a white crayon so you can see. A lot of things usually show up pretty well on black paper. And so I've drawn that. You probably, I don't know if you can see that. I drew a really small wing on the crease of my paper. I'm going to quickly cut it out. Because I did it on the fold, when I unfold it, I have two perfectly symmetrical wings, just like that. Now, oh, where is it? There it is. My bat, <laughs> these are really small wings, so you can make them as big as you want. Clearly, with my first go around, I made much larger wings. Kind of moving quickly, so I just made some small wings. And here you can either glue the wings on the bat back. What I chose to do is I chose to use a stapler. If you have a stapler small enough, you can just kind of reach the stapler into the toilet paper roll, find the wings, place them where you want on the body, and then just quickly staple it closed. And then you have a staple holding the wings together and voila. Now from here, if you'd like to add teeth, you can. Um, I think the glue is getting dry there. Um, you can either make little teeth out of white paper, or like I said, I like to reuse things. So this is like micro recycling. Just take that, cut it into a little point. So you basically just cut two little tips off of these circles and then if you can see it I have like a little tooth it's like a little triangle or pizza slice of pizza so I would add that I get my glue to come out just a small dot a very small tooth does not require much glue at all. There you go, one tooth down. Now I'm gonna leave it there. If I wanted a second tooth or four more teeth, I could just keep going. Um, this is a great art project, so you make it whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, make your bat come alive, if you will. A lot of bats that drink nectar out of flowers, they have really long tongues that they use to get up into the flower. Uh, so you could add a pink tongue that's pretty long if you wanted to, depending on the bat that you're trying to make. But that is our story time for this morning. Thank you guys for joining. If you end up making a bat and would like to share your bat craft with Trees Atlanta, we would love to see pictures. You can send them here. Um, to me at my email address and we'll make sure that our staff gets to see it and you might with your permission get featured on social media um, for our Trees Atlanta community to see because we've got a lot of fun things going on um, with our virtual learning journeys. So thank you for joining us this morning. If you would like to stay connected, um, we have a lesson this afternoon about urban heat, the urban heat island effect that I will be teaching. Um, that's targeted at sixth graders and up, but if you'd like to tune in for that, just to learn, that would be, you're more than welcome to. We have another story time tomorrow morning where we will be um, reading the Lorax and doing a Lorax craft or activity as well. And then tomorrow afternoon, I'll be leading a nature walk to explore and study the canopy cooling effect, the, the wonderful benefits of shade provided by trees. All right, with that, 
stay connected, check out our website, send me an email for with any questions about how to make a bat or with pictures of the bat that you do make. Um, until next time, take care and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.